All right, in 22, we have the faces of a four-sided die numbered one through four. And this, for this game, the die is tossed and the number that lands face down is recorded. This table summarizes the points a player earns for the number that lands face down. So it looks like if they can get a zero or one or two, consider two independent tosses of the die. Let the random variable S represent some of the points earned from the two tosses. So which table represents the probability of this reaching the best? Okay, so we have to first see what are the possible points we can get, and then we can figure out the probability. So I like to um, set up a, a table, like basically like a table where you can see, can you have toss one going across the top, and then top toss two will be like going across the rows. So what I mean, like toss, toss one, you can get um, a one, two, a three, or a four, right? And same thing for toss two, you can get a one, two, three, or three over four, three or a four. Now in here, we're gonna write the points that you get when you roll a one and a one on that toss and so forth. So like the points you get if you roll a one and a one, you would get a zero plus a zero, right? you get a zero each time, so you would just get zero. If you roll the one and then a two, you would get a zero plus a one, so you just get one. If you roll the one and then a three, you get zero. A one and a four, two. So that's, so each of these, I'm gonna look for the corresponding points. Two and a one, zero plus one. Two and a two, one, one. Two and a three, one, zero. Two and a four, one, three, one, two, so three. Three and a zero, or three and a one. Whoops, three and a one, zero. Three and a two, one, three and a three, zero, three and a four, two, four and a one, two, four and a two, three, four and a three, two and a four and a four, four. Oops, I meant to make it a little more easy. Okay, so all the, so, so these are the possible points you can get. So the points you can get are with zero, one, two, three, or four. So let's make another table now. Use the pen, I guess. Points. You get a zero, one, two, three, and a four, four, a four. And then we write what the probability of getting each of those could be. Since there's 16 total, we can just add up how many there are out of 16. So there's one, two, three, four, four, four zeros out of 16. One, two, three, four, four ones. The so four out of 16 there too. One, two, three, four twos. So four out of 16 there as well. Threes, we got just two threes. So two out of 16 and the fours, we got just one. So this is our, this is a probability table. And let's just convert these to, to, um, to um, decimals. So these are 0.25, you know. That'll be one eight. A point one two five and half a point one two five point oh six two five. And looks like that will be D. So the answer will be D. All right, twenty three. We have a botanist that collected one leaf at random from each of 10 randomly selected ma mature maple trees of the same species. The mean and standard deviation of the surface areas for the 10 leaves in the sample were computed. We're gonna assume the distribution of surface areas of maple trees is normal. What's the appropriate method for the constructing of one, a one sample comet interval to estimate the population mean surface area of the species of maple leaves? And why is the method appropriate? So remember, a uh, confidence interval point estimate, because we're estimating mean, a point estimate would be a sample mean. So x bar plus or minus, 
our critical value. Critical value could be T star or Z star. And we use T star if we don't know the, 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 the um, standard deviation. We would use Z star if we could, it, but um, usually, you know, you're really not gonna ever really know the population standard deviation. So we use T star because we don't know the population standard deviation. And times basically the, the standard error. Let me see what the um, standard error would be here. So keep this guy. So from our table again, times S of the square root of N. But we don't even need to know that much information, it looks like. So this is going to be a one sample T interval. And that's again because we don't know the population standard deviation. So maybe A. Or, so it's going to be A. Again, in an ideal world, we would use we we wouldn't use a Z star as a critical value because that's more accurate. But you know, again, we aren't ever really going to um, have that information. So we have to use a different distribution known as the T distribution with degrees of freedom. And twenty four. A state educational agency was concerned about the salaries of public school teachers in one region of the state, A, so region A, and they were worried that they were higher than the salaries in another region of the state, region B. The agency took two independent random samples of salaries of public school teachers, one from region A and one from region B. The data are summarized in the table below. So we're gonna conduct a significance test our null hypothesis is that their salaries are the same. So we would say like the mean salary of region A, so mu A is equal to the mean salary of region B. The alternative is that the mean salary of region A is gonna be greater than the mean salary of region B. And we have our table, we have our data here. So we can actually run and run this in our calculator. So go to, go to, Let's see, I believe it's go to stat, tests. And you see here, you're gonna have a two sample t-test because we're comparing means. And I already, did, I mean, I just, I did the problem earlier. So here's the data, or sorry, here's the, the statistics. We're given already the sample means, the sample standard deviations and the sample sizes. I just input them in, I just input them appropriately. Sample mean one. So that's my, that's my, that's um, A. And since um, since um, I made um, region A, um, the, the, the sample one in this, in this, in this calculator, I'm gonna be running a test for mu one being greater than mu two, if sample A was um was a sam was um sample two in this in this calculator, it would be the other way around. But it's one sided, and this is going to be pulled, pulled because again with the significance test for uh, if you if you want to figure out if there's a if one of the if there is a true difference in you know in the pop population means then you're gonna basically assume that there isn't a difference. So you would actually calculate it from uh, assuming, using, uh, assuming, the, um, assuming that, the, that, the, that the means or the means for both populations are the same. And so all your calculations would come from a, a, normal, a normal curve um, where we would calculate it from combined. We also call it combined counts. That's what I was, that's what I was trying to fumble. My, I was fumbling my words. So let me just show you. Like on your formula sheet, see here. If we assume this, we'll have something like this. But it's also known that that the that they're pull, that the data is pulled together. Anyways, so we just calculate this and see we get a p value of 0.014 degrees of freedom of 193. So let's see what would make sense because depending on our alpha level, we'd reject this at 0.05, but we would not reject it at an alpha 
of point um point one point oh one. So it looks like that's what we're comparing here. So yes, is there no because again we would, at, at at that low of a level we fail to reject. B, um, B at but not at no we again at at since again we want our our p value to be less than our alpha our our it's, our p value is not less than either one so it's not going to be a or b. C yes there's significance level at alpha equals 0 0.05 yeah because this is less than 0 0.05 but not at 0 0.01. Yeah, because this is, it wouldn't be at this, but it would be at that because this is less than that, but that's not less than that. So the answer would be C. So there you go. I hope that helps.